Good morning, it's the 13th of December today and welcome to the Daily Post with some scriptures and thoughts and ideas that we uh, hope will be helpful and uplifting through the day for you. Psalm 31 and verse 1 is the opening scripture. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Reading the Bible in a year today, we're moving on through Hosea chapters 12, 13 and 14 today and Revelation chapter 4. The thoughts of the day. A determined person will do more with a pen and paper than a lazy person will accomplish with a personal computer. An invincible determination can accomplish almost anything and in this lies the great distinction between great men and little men. Try not to become a man of success, but rather a man of value. Wise words. The motivational thoughts for the day. Two kinds of people. My grandfather once told me that there were two kinds of people. Those who do the work and those who take the credit. He told me that I should try to be in the first group. He said there was much less competition. <laughs> Wise man. <laughs> On this day in 1642, Abel Tasman first set foot in New Zealand. He was also the first European in recorded history to step foot on Tasmania, which he named Van Diemen's Land. And Tasmania, of course, is an island state at the south of Australia. In, 19, oh sorry, in 1884, on this day, a coin-operated weighing machine was patented by Percy Everett. In 1967, a military coup in Greece overthrew the monarchy and King Constantine fled to Rome with his family. In 1972, on this day, the last human landed on the moon. So far, I think they're about to go back there now, but that was the last one up to this stage. And in 1976, the first oil brought to Britain from the Brent oil field in the North Sea arrived on this day. In 1976, on this day also, the longest non-stop passenger air flight from Sydney to San Francisco, some 13 hours and 14 minutes. I think some of the airlines are trying longer flights now, but they haven't committed because they're not sure how people will handle them. On this day in 2003, Sodom Saddam Hussein was captured. And in 2022, the first nuclear fusion reaction in a laboratory setting was completed on this day. It replicates the same energy that powers the sun. It was announced by scientists at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California. In 2022, New Zealand passed the world's first tobacco ban outlawing smoking for those who were born after 2009. Personal story of the day. Picture this. Tourists rarely take great photos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they seldom make the effort to be at the right spot at the right time to get the right angle of light in the right weather conditions. To capture beautiful outdoor pictures, Professional photographers are careful to view the scene from different angles, during different seasons and at different times of the day. This makes me wonder if the reason some people don't have a clear picture of the beauty and glory of God is that they make snap judgments. They come to wrong conclusions about God based on a bad church experience or an encounter with someone who claims to be a Christian but isn't living like one. They misjudge what the Lord is like and turn away from him, feeling disillusioned. 
The pursuit of God involves more than casual observation. King David told his son Solomon, quote, If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. Recorded in 1 Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 9. The psalmist said, Blessed are those who seek him with the whole heart. Psalm 119 and verse 2. And the author of Hebrews wrote that God rewards, quote, those who diligently seek him, unquote. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. If we wish to see and know God in all his fullness and glory, we can't approach him like tourists. We need to seek him at all times and with all our heart. Wise words. Praise the Lord. The devotional thoughts of the day. The first, great misunderstanding. The scripture is from Ecclesiastes 5 verse 2. References from Job 11 verses 1 to 20. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. The Austrian author Robert Musil once wrote, quote, Philosophers are people who do violence, but have no army at their disposal, and so subjugate the world by locking it into a system, unquote. This may not be true of all philosophers, but in the case of Zophar, the final of Job's friends to speak, it is rather appropriate. Zophar is the most critical in his approach. He tries to lock Job into the same system as his friends, namely, that suffering comes from sin, so the solution must be repentance. We have now seen this three times, from Eliphaz in chapter 5 and verse 17, from Bildad in chapter 8 and verse 20, and from Zophar in chapter 11 and verse 14. In the first part of his speech, verse 26, Zophar dismisses Job's words as idle chatter. He can't hear Job's anguished cries in the context of despair, but rather focuses only on Job, Job's bold outbursts and questions. He accuses Job of being self-righteous and mistakenly charges Job with claiming to be flawless and pure before God. Yet neither of these claims can be found in Job's earlier speeches. Zophar prays that God would rebuke Job. At the end of the day, and at the end of the book of Job, this is exactly what happens. But Zophar and his two companions are also roundly rebuked as well. Zophar rightly claims that humans can't presume to know God's ways, verses 7 to 12. But he also implies that humans shouldn't even question God's ways, see verse 10. As we've noted earlier, Job has doubted and challenged God, but he has not mocked him, as Zophar claims. Additionally, Zophar harshly says that a witless or ungodly man could never have the wisdom to know God's ways. No wonder Mr. Zophar was rebuked. Wise words to think about again carefully and uh, include them in our days so we don't go down the same pathway. The second thought, tough times, a scripture from Ruth 1 verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. Desperation can drive us to many extremes. Comedian Woody Allen characterised our times when he said, quote, We stand at a crossroads. Down one road is despondency and despair, and down the other is total annihilation. Let us pray that we choose the right road. End of quote. This kind of desperation sometimes even plagues God's people and causes them to make poor choices. Elimelech 
was facing desperate times and he needed to make some difficult choices. He was struggling to feed his family. A wife and two growing boys needed nourishment, but a famine gripped the land. Famines were often God's way of bringing his people to the point of submission. They were not simply to punish Israel, but to get them to turn from their sins and back to him. Yet with our clear guidance from God, Elimelech chose to run away. Instead of facing the Lord's judgment on the land and trusting God to provide, he moved his family to a pagan land and raised his children in a society that did not know the God of Israel. He even broke God's laws by allowing his sons to marry pagan wives, as we read in Deuteronomy 7, verses 3 and 4. It is very tempting to look for the easy way out of our problems, but any choices that take us away from God are, in the long run, the wrong way. Elimelech's choice ultimately brought death to himself and his two sons, and no matter how desperate the situation, it is always better to face what God has allowed and to trust him than it is to run from our circumstances and to do it alone. If you are experiencing difficult times, make your choices based on clear direction from God. So you need to seek that clearly in prayer. Don't allow a feeling of desperation to steer you in the wrong direction. The facts of the day. The rhinoceros horn is made of the same stuff that's found in our hair, hair and fingernails, which is called keratin. It also contains something called gelatin. Did you know that sailor, dead leaf, paper kite, blue striped cow, crow, sorry, blue striped crow, julia, and great egg fly? are all the names of butterflies. The closing thought for the day, Lord, teach me to see what you see, to think as you think, and to act as you want me to. Wise words. Thank you for being with us. We hope that you will be uh, uplifted and cheered up and helped along through this day by today's thoughts and ideas and scriptures. And we hope that you'll join us again tomorrow for some more. In the meantime, may the Lord bless your day. Bye for now.